Good morning, everybody. Hope you're feeling energized. Yeah, my name is Beth Swedeen. I'm the director for the board for people with developmental disabilities, and we are one of the co-sponsors of the first annual Employment First Conference. <laughs> Woohoo! We also really want to thank our partners in this effort, which is Wisconsin APSI, and that's the Association for Persons Who Support Employment, and People First Wisconsin. So give it up for both those organizations as well. Now, I have a question for you. How many of you out in the audience are working? How many of you are employees or directors or the boss? Raise your hand high. Great. How many of you think that's really important to who you are? Raise your hand high. Great. So we're all on the same page, right? It's all about employment. Employment is a really big part of who we are. And we have with us as our keynote this morning somebody who shares that belief. I want to introduce Governor Walker, Governor Scott Walker, the uh, governor of Wisconsin. And let me tell you a little bit about his vision for Wisconsin. As you probably know, when he was elected, he made front and center the idea of hiring more people who want to work, as well as meeting workforce needs of businesses in the state of Wisconsin. He also brought with him to his office a really deep desire to reach out to the disability community because he knows that people with disabilities make great employees and workers. Yeah, you can clap for that. That's important. <laughs> Governor Walker has been talking to businesses all over the state, all kinds of businesses, and he can tell you a little bit about it, about the value and importance of hiring people with disabilities. Not because it's a nice thing to do, but because it's good for business. So just this year, in the last year, he has signed a huge package of mental health bills that include employment for more people with mental health concerns. He has increased funding. Yeah, you should clap for that. That's exciting. He has also um, supported an increase and in full funding for the Division of Voc Rehab, which means this summer, 6,000 people with disabilities are going to get off wait lists. And finally, just two weeks ago, he signed a bill in Janesville that provides more money for technical colleges to train people to be ready for work. And in that package is a million dollars for businesses specifically to train people with disabilities, as well as $750,000 to increase project search. That means 20 new project search sites in the next year and a half. So this is a governor who doesn't just talk about it, he does something about it. And with that, I'd like to welcome Governor Scott Walker. Well, good morning. Well, first off, Cindy gave me the shirt, so I got to hold it uh, up here. I haven't put it on yet, but in a few minutes, I'm going to be joined by some other folks uh, with the shirt here. And now that I got both hands free. I'm going to get out from behind the podium uh, and uh, say what an honor it is to be here today. Uh, Beth did a wonderful job in, in the introduction there, and, and I appreciate not only her work uh, and the board's work, but I appreciate all the partners here today, uh, all, the, um, all the support components here, uh, whether you're a caseworker, a caregiver, a family member, uh, as well as all those individuals here who either are employees or are prospective employees, because that's really what this is all about. It's about um, helping find integrated community-based employment opportunities uh, that provide sustainable uh, careers, not just jobs, uh, for people with disabilities all across the state. And so it's really my honor to be here today to talk for just a few minutes uh, about that and, and to share with what's going to be a great conference. Uh, first of all, I've got to tell you, I'm a little envious after this. Uh, my, my next stop is, is outside of the area. I'm, I'm zooming around the state to sign a couple pieces of, of legislation. And, Years ago, when I was a county executive, I'd come here for conventions, and my sons, who are 18 and 19 now, I would come with because after the conference is all done, we'd go in the Kalahari uh, in the water park and have some fun. So I'm a little envious for those of you who get to stick around and go down the water slide. I, I call the one the toilet bowl. It's the one where you, you zoom around and then kind of get flushed straight down. So uh, uh, it's a lot of fun whether you're in it or watching it. Uh, but envious. And, and Beth actually told me that the Kalahari uh, is interested in being a project search site, so I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, this would be a pretty cool site to work at. 
So thanks to Todd and Greg and everybody else for that interest. Uh, let me go back a little bit in, in, in time and tell you how we got, to, at least how I got to where I'm at here. Um, and uh, for those signing, hi. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate uh, your being, being with you here today as well. Um, for me, as Beth mentioned, when I first came in a couple years ago, we had an incredible uh, crisis, both an economic and a fiscal crisis. And so we made a number of changes to try and, and help more people get employed overall, all across the state. In fact, four years ago in 2010, the unemployment rate statewide for everyone uh, was about 9.2%. Today, it's about 6.1%. That's great. That's a wonderful drop uh, in the unemployment rate. That means more people are working, more employers are hiring. That's a good trend, and we want to keep that going. I'd, I'd like, by the end of this next quarter, to be below 6% unemployment. We haven't had unemployment that low uh, for more than five and a half years. So that's great overall, right? Um, but one of the challenges... Um, and, and it's been a little bit masked uh, by, the, uh, uh, by some of the recession that we here in Wisconsin and across America people went through, uh, was that we also have some challenges. It might not seem as apparent over the last few years, but we have some challenges with employers are here that want to grow as well as with other employers that might want to come to Wisconsin. And it's been a little bit masked because some of the people at some of our key industries across the state uh, who might have otherwise been ready to retire, they're in that baby boom generation, stuck around a little bit longer because in 2009 and 2010 and throughout those years, a lot of those retirement plans that people had, like the stock market, kind of went down. And so many people stayed in the workforce longer. Well, now as things are getting better, as the economy is getting better, in the not-too-distant future, we're going to have a huge gap in this state in terms of positions that will be open. That is both a challenge and an opportunity. If a company, if a company is here or wants to come here and they're looking at our state or any other state and they say, hey, wait a minute, we need to have people in healthcare, we need to have people in computer science, we need to have people in manufacturing and retail and customer service, and we're going to have this huge hole, they're going to pick states to grow in where they know they've got a steady supply of well-trained, well-prepared, hard-working potential employees. And so, We've tried over the last year or two to start helping prepare for that. Not just to help people who want a job today, but help make sure there's even more people uh, heading forward. It's why, as Beth mentioned, we put a lot of money. I'm not a big spender, but we put a lot, about $100 million in the worker training in this last budget uh, for our technical colleges, for something called that started out being called Wisconsin Fast Forward, where we help with uh, customized training for manufacturing and for construction and for other trades like that, because we need... What I find time and time again is I hear employers that say, I have work, I just don't have enough people with the skills needed to fill those jobs. And so in that larger picture as we're doing that, and, and a couple years ago, two years ago in particular, one of the first ways we did that ties into what we're doing this year to try and help employ more people with disabilities was something we started two years ago, and that was we found that veterans, people who had served our country in the military from Wisconsin, who were coming back from places like Afghanistan and Iraq had a much higher rate of unemployment than did everybody else, our, our fellow citizens. In fact, two years ago, our Army National Guard alone had an unemployment rate of over, over 10 percent. One of the good things is in 2012, we named it the Year of the Veteran and made a focus on employment for returning veterans, saying that to me, at least, personally, and I just saw a group of 79 soldiers deploy yesterday. We still are deploying people overseas, deploy to Afghanistan. And it's so important when I see those men and women, I want to make sure that if anyone who's ever served our country, particularly if they were deployed overseas, shouldn't come back to their home state and not be able to find work. And so we aggressively put in place an employment program as a part of the Year of the Veteran. And today, that unemployment rate that was over 12% is now 5.1% for Army National Guard. And my goal is by the end of this next year, I want to have no returning veteran unemployed that wants to work, not be able to find a job here in the state of Wisconsin. So what we've tried to do is systematically tie everything in to supporting hard work. My goal overall, whether it's a veteran, whether it's somebody who's underemployed or unemployed, is to say that anybody who wants to work, we should be able to help find a job. If someone wants to work, we should be able to help find a job. I think there's something innately important, both 
uh, ideologically, or not ideologically, uh, morally, uh, as well as economically about being able to reward hard work in this state and, and find a way to help accommodate so that everyone who wants to work can, can do that. And so we've tried in a series of ways, Beth mentioned a little bit last year in our budget, um, we were meeting with stakeholders, many of whom might be here as part of this program, but who talked about some of the not only chronic challenges for people who are living with mental health issues uh, in terms of the stigma and the challenges they face, uh, but also the gaps that some counties were pretty good and other counties were not. And so we put more money than any governor's put in the last 30 years into mental health services, almost $30 million, to make sure that in all 72 counties, we have access to crisis services and other things, not just to provide social services, but in turn, because we believe, based on the data and the information and the science, that if we help people, particularly early on within the community, it'll make it easier for them to return to the workplace and to be productive uh, members of not only society, but of their individual uh, organization or company they work for. And, and so for us, it's, but with all these things, we try to target it. It's not just about writing a blank check out. It's not about announcing how much money you give, but rather saying, this is what we're willing to invest in. I think as you look at organizations here and others that you support, you don't just support because you think they do a good job. You want to know they do a good job, right? You say, if I'm going to give you $25 a month out of my paycheck, I want to know what you're going to do with it. And I want to see some results. And so the money we've invested in each of these areas was targeted towards saying, we want to know what you're doing and what the outcomes are. And so then out of that, uh, a year ago, Jack Markell, uh, you may not know the name, but he's the governor of Delaware. Uh, a year ago, he was the chairman of the National Governors Association. Jack is a good friend, uh, which surprises some people because I'm a Republican, he's a Democrat, but Jack and I get ext along extremely well. And every year, the chair of the National Governors Association gets to pick a special theme or a campaign or an agenda uh, that he or she gets to enact as the chair of the National Governors Association. Jack picked something called a better bottom line. What that was was a year-long focus on helping employers hire more people with disabilities. And so as he held these sessions and I would go to these meetings, uh, in fact, a year ago, February, I was in Washington, D.C. at the National Governors Association meeting in, in our nation's capital. I was listening to this, and, and Jack had brought a panel together, and I was kind of intrigued with it, just knowing what DVR does here and the good work that I'd seen in the past. And I, I'd been previously years ago at a project search sites in, in Madison, and, and I'd been to others since. Um, but I really was kind of intrigued with this, because you see, it wasn't just visiting a program. He made this a part of his year-long agenda. And at this session in February uh, of 2013, I was listening to the CEO of Walgreens. Now, many of you probably know because of the Ready program here and others, you know about the benefit of Walgreens, and there are a great many organizations. So I don't want to just single out Walgreens. There's a lot of great employers here in the state and across the country. But he said something that I've repeated since. He said, what we do when it comes to hiring people with disabilities is not about charity. It's not about charity. It's about a benefit to both the employee and to the employer. And he said, but you've got to be willing to think differently. What they found with one of their distribution centers, I remember, when they made accommodations so that more than half of the employees they had at that distribution center were people with disabilities, their productivity went up 120%. Now, that was pretty smart. It wasn't just a feel-good thing. I mean, it is a good thing, don't get me wrong. But it was a smart decision, but it took some vision. It took, in his case, not just the CEO, but, but one of his top managers, one of his VPs, I believe, was someone who had, a, I believe, a son with a disability. And so he personally understood, not so much about the disability, but about the unique abilities that his child had and how, if properly accommodated for in the workplace, could offer tremendous value. And so they've done that. And they've done that not just there. They're, they're doing it at retail locations across the state and across the country. And so what that inspired me was thinking, hey, wait a minute. <clears throat> Instead of just doing a little here and a little there, uh, and then having a little bit of a follow-up talk with some other advocates, uh, Beth from here, but also some others nationally, I said, why can't we do that? You know, we did this two years ago with veterans. We put a focus on that. We've talked about last year. My wife wanted us to focus on a year of... Of, of, of well-being, of, of not just wellness and health, but of 
total well-being. And I said, well, why not take and make this the year of a better bottom line here in the state of Wisconsin? So I asked Jack, I said, do you mind if I use uh, the same slogan? He said, no, he was honored. He was thrilled that we were doing it. We're the, the first state out of the gate after he did that. We're encouraging others to do it across this, this great country. But our focus is twofold. One from a PR standpoint, and the other, Beth alluded to a little bit, from a, not just talking about it, but putting your money where your mouth is, putting some finances behind this. But on the, the overall communication side, what we're doing is we started out, hopefully you saw us in January in our State of the State address. We talked about this program. I introduced some of the folks I met, people like Patrick Young, who's with us here today, who showed me a couple years ago when I was touring in Menominee Falls um, at uh, Tailored Label Products. Um, the tremendous value, and his employer there reminded me that, again, much like the CEO of Walgreens, he said, you know, Patrick adds great value. We're thrilled to death that Patrick's working here, but Patrick is an integral part of our organization. He adds tremendous value. He adds morale. He gets people pumped up. He doesn't only, not only does he do a great job, he encourages others to do an even better job than they did before. He adds tremendous value to our company. And so we highlighted Patrick and some other folks that I've met with trips around the state of Wisconsin, whether it was in, in La Crosse and Holman and, and uh, Wausau and other places across the state, and, and talked about that. I talked a little bit about my experience years ago. The first time was, I, was at a, a project search site in Madison uh, as a great reminder to employees. And I've repeated this many times since in front of chambers of commerce and other groups out there because I don't just talk about it at groups like this. I talk about it as part of our overall strategy along with technical colleges and, and uh, high school programs and other things like that about getting more people on a career path, about career development and filling the positions we vitally need filled when it comes to jobs in the state. Um, but I talked about Project Search and one of the first visits I made was at one of the hospitals in Madison that was one of the original five, four hospitals as well as the Walmart Distribution Center, and said I met a young woman who was in the area where they sterilized surgical equipment. She had acute autism. And, and I said it was just a great reminder of how her having acute autism by many was viewed as a disability. But when it came to the position that they found for her to be in charge, or not in charge, of, but, but to play a key role in sterilizing surgical equipment, a procedure that requires pretty intense activities to make sure it's done exactly the same way every time, otherwise that's going to have a negative impact on someone's health. That was an area where actually her abilities were much better suited than just about anybody else would be. And so it was a great reminder, and I repeated it several times since our state of the state, that that's a good example where it takes an employer, like that hospital, like Walgreens, like others out there we visited in the last few months, who identified the unique abilities that someone has who society otherwise identifies as having a disability and plug that into their organization or business to add value to the business or organization as well as giving a benefit to the employee. And that's really what we're trying to do. And so from a public relations standpoint, a communication standpoint, whatever you want to call it, uh, what we've made as a goal is not only to talk about it in the state of the state address, but every month, every month across the state of Wisconsin in a different part of the state each month as well, to go to at least one site, sometimes more than one a month, but at least one business, at least one business that employs people with disabilities successfully, uh, and to highlight that business in the media, uh, to go visit, do a tour, meet the employees, talk to the owners, talk to the managers, talk to others. Um, sometimes it's employing just one individual. Other times, recently, a couple weeks ago, I was up at Mosinee uh, Cold Storage, uh, where they're involved with uh, uh, cheese and cheese stores for some of our uh, cheese makers here in Wisconsin. A third of all their employees are people with disabilities. Um, and they're a wonderful part. They earn a good wage. In fact, one of the things I, I talked about when I talked with, the, with them with the media there wasn't just about uh, the job that they do, but I, I, I love to ask, you know, what do you spend the money on? Um, and it was on, you know, an apartment or, or, or a home that was, a couple of them told me about their cars that they had, uh, a couple of them talked about dogs or cats that they had, um, a couple of them talked about, it was a Friday, so talked about getting ready to go to a fish fry that night with some friends, um, a couple of the employees there, and it was important, not just for me to hear, but, but, but to, for the media to hear, um, that this, this wasn't, uh, this was about finding the right niche so that someone with a disability uh, not only had a job, uh, but had the dignity that comes from work 
they had a paycheck. Um, and Cindy was kidding me about this before. Um, she even said she liked to pay taxes, although she did like the fact I announced the other day we were paying less in taxes than we were before. But, 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 but having all that that comes a part of that, that dignity of work, how important that is. And so one part of our focus this year with a better bottom line is drawing attention both to employers who employ people with disabilities who find those unique abilities, as well as parallel each month and trying to identify at least one organization that helps place people, that helps make those accommodations, that helps open the eyes of employers, that helps train people, whatever it might be, but organizations that we have all scattered throughout the state, big and small alike, uh, that go out and are successfully helping place people uh, with disabilities, with the skills that they need, and, and making that right connection to add value both to the individual and to the organization and to our business. And so we're doing that. We're going to do that all 12 months of this year. We're going to continue to highlight that. The other part of it is, like I said, putting your money where your mouth is, and that is part of the, the money we set aside for worker training, workforce development, career development, whatever you might want to call it. In addition to our tech schools and things like we call dual enrollment in our high schools, where we have our high schools working with our technical colleges to get more young people the skills they need to enter the workforce, another key part of now this new expanded Wisconsin Fast Forward program is helping place resources behind hiring more people with disabilities. Beth alluded to it, it's a combination between helping, and this adds on to the, the, the money we put last year that we worked with Senator Schilling and Representative Shanklin and signed actually over in La Crosse legislation in the lab, 6,000 more spots uh, in DVR, uh, 6,000 more people uh, will be able to work with DVR and individualized work plans. You know, last year we had about 17,000 that had individualized work plans. We had about 14,000, if I remember right, uh, that got some sort of extended uh, job training. And then out of that, we had 3,840 specific individuals uh, who, uh, who got uh, placed into jobs in the community that were integrated, that paid, uh, in fact, I think the average pay, if I remember right, was over $12 an hour, uh, that were integrated into the community and, and were success stories. Uh, and I know for this conference, part of that goal is not just through DVR, but through all of our efforts, is by 2016 to more than double the number of people who have integrated, community-based, uh, sustainable careers uh, uh, for people with disabilities, and I share in that goal. And so part of what we're doing in the Better Bottom Line is putting some resources behind that from what we did last year, adding to that with additional resources in this current program I signed the law two weeks ago, and as well, preparing more young people to make that next step. So Project Search, which we're excited about, when I first visited, it had five campuses, went up to seven. Last year I was over um, at one of the new ones in Appleton last year and met some of the great participants there. Um, talked to Olivia, who's over at Children's, and excited about that and other places. Uh, but our goal is the money we're putting behind that is we want to add 20 more sites or more over the next three years so that we're up to 27 sites, ideally even more. And, and I'm glad if the Kalahari and others are going to join because we'll expand beyond just hospitals and distribution centers. Uh, but we'd love to have at least 20 more sites in the next three years. Uh, we think that would be a huge boost forward, uh, particularly as we help uh, young people in high school transition, get those skills, get the confidence, uh, and, and, and uh, get what's needed to be able to transition into the workplace. And then hopefully the other work we're doing uh, will help open the eyes and minds of employers out there so that as people go through programs like Project Search, they're ready to go and there are employers out there. Uh, and for us, to me, it's like I said, this is, this is a, while it's a good thing to do, it's not about charity. I remind people all the time, we're not asking employers to do this uh, just to feel good. They will, but, but uh, uh, it's not just about that. It's about identifying the unique abilities that people with disabilities have. If they do so, much like we did with veterans and continue to do with veterans a few years ago, we highlighted that there's a high level of, of loyalty, there's a high level of dedication and experience and expertise uh, with our veterans. Similarly so here, uh, the retention rate for people with disabilities is far exceeds. I mean, it's not even remotely close uh, to the average here across the state and around the country. Uh, but the key is, is opening people's eyes to figuring out how to make those reasonable accommodations, uh, be it physical or otherwise, uh, that appropriately accommodate people who then can offer uh, limitless uh, potential in terms of the good they can do for that company or that organization. And so we're excited about the future. We're excited about being here today. You've got a great conference. Uh, I think there's some incredible enthusiasm out there. You know, one of my goals overall is not only to reward 
hard work, but to instill the dignity of work and, and to allow that for everyone who wants to have a job that they can find a job. Uh, one of the things I'd like over time is to measure success in government, not so much by how many people are dependent on the government, but how many people are no longer dependent on the government. Not because we push people out, but because we help people transition from government dependence in some way or form or another to true independence, uh, knowing that to do that will take some reasonable accommodation. But if we're open to that, um, not just here, but if we're open to that with employers and organizations all across the state, uh, there's no end to the potential good we could do. That's not just good for people with disabilities. Not, that's not just good for, for people who work with people with disabilities or people who are family members of people with disabilities. That's good for the state. Um, again, not just only from a moral standpoint, but it's good because we're going to need more employees. We need more people in the workforce. If we're going to grow and expand, particularly with this new wave of retirees that come out of the baby boom generation, we need to have people ready to go in positions. We can't afford to have people on the sideline. If people are, want to work, if people have the, the interest and the passion to be able to work, we need to be able to find a way uh, to find the pathway, to give them the skills, to give them the expertise, to give them the support that they need to get in the workplace and then stay there. And, and we're not going to leave any group on the sideline. We need everybody in the game. Uh, but to do so, you need to have those skills. I say that a long time ago, both of my sons uh, played football. They're both in college now. But I remember uh, throughout all the years I watched, and I watched many a cold night um, on a Friday night when they were in high school and on a Saturday morning when they played uh, before they got to high school, I watched they both play, and they're both wide receivers. And I always say throughout all those years, I don't ever remember as they ran in and out, bringing the plays in and out to the quarterback, I don't ever remember any of the kids on their team who were sitting on the bench with their helmet off and their shoes untied and the mouth guard out, uh, out of their mouth ever got into the game. Why? Because the coach wanted people who were ready, who were ready to go, who had, this, who had their helmet on, had their gear ready, were ready to get in the game. What we're trying to do here with this and other similar programs is make sure that we have equipped everyone who wants to work with the skills and the accommodations and the focus and the support they need to get in the game and that we continue to give them that support so that they can stay in the game when it comes to gainful employment. We're going to keep doing that going forward. We're excited about this, uh, this uh, program. We're excited about this conference kicking off for the first time and what it means in the state. And we're excited about the endless opportunities not just to help employ more people with disabilities, but for the tremendous value that those employees are going to bring to their companies and their organizations all across this great state. Thanks so much for having me here today. Governor Walker, um, I'd like to introduce you to the employment first ambassadors from Wisconsin. And we also have a couple of uh, WBDDD uh, board, member, our board members and uh, staff. And so we are honored as I am a member of People First Wisconsin, as well as, as, well as Cindy is. We would like to uh, present you with a plaque, a plaque for your uh, better line uh, initiative. 